back here into this study, like I said, uh, we've, we've been looking at this for quite a while. Uh, the Lord had me working, uh, <clears throat> working on this in our Tuesday night sessions for at least about a couple of months. I know we were on it. But uh, towards the end there, he says, I, I, I want you to transfer this over to Sunday. And I want you to go back through it. So we've been uh, going back through everything that the Lord has been sharing with us in our Bible studies. We've, been, we've brought it to our Sunday morning service. So we're going to continue to look at that this morning, all right? Uh, so if you have your Bible, let's uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're looking, once again, because maybe you kind of forgot about what we were dealing with because on last Sunday we had to do our Faith and Family Weekend, but we're, we're talking about kingdom finances, all right? Yeah. Kingdom finances. So if you have your Bible, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Let's pick up our opening text there once again. Then we'll move on over into the things that the Lord has to share for today. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. So that's something that you have to do. Remember. You have to put yourself in a place to remember this. Now, I've said several times, one of the ways I believe that God has given for us to make sure that we keep our minds and our hearts focused on remembering who it is that has gotten us to wherever it is that we are in our lives at, to this point is the uh, operation of tithing. Because when you tithe according to the Word of God and you do it correctly, you can't tithe without speaking back to the Lord and thanking Him for where He's brought you from. And if you are tithing and you're not doing that, then like I've said in the past, just bringing an envelope to the offering basket isn't actually tithing. Tithing isn't tithing until faith is released and faith is released through words. So you're supposed to say some things unto God and Deuteronomy chapter 26 will help you with that. But it says that thou should remember the Lord thy God. Why? Because it is he that has given thee the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he have sworn unto his fathers as unto our fathers as it is this day. So we've been looking at this and we've been really around, moving around that first portion of the scripture here where it says the power that he's given us the power to get wealth. And we basically unravel what he was talking about concerning the power. Uh, and we found out that God's power is located in his word. Without his word, you have no power. So we, 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 without going back through everything that we've been looking at, the power that he has given unto us to get wealth is he's given us his word. Amen. And if we'll take his word and stand on his word and operate through his word, which basically equals our faith, then the power to access what belongs to us is made available. You can't get to what God has promised you without the word. It's impossible. The word is the road map to get to where you're trying to go. So without going back through all that, we, we, we covered all that. And I believe this is where we ended off last time, looking at the connection between the word and the blessing. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. <clears throat> and we all know this scripture. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, we can't do, we, that scripture cannot be denied. We are blessed. God said we are. He said that he's already blessed you and I with all spiritual blessings. Or let's go ahead and put it this way. He's already empowered us with everything that heaven has. We've been empowered. That's what the blessing is. You've been empowered. There is no way to deny that. There is no way to undo it. There's no way to take it back. God's word is true. And he says that you're blessed. And if he says you're blessed, you're blessed. And you're blessed independent of anything that you have or have not done. All right? Now, if that's all that was needed, then everybody in this room would not have any financial issues in their lives at all. 
Now, we're, we're good as, you know, we make our confessions. We're blessed in holy favor. Glory to God. The blessings on me. And somebody said, how you doing this morning? I'm blessed and I'm favored of God. We've made these confessions. We're saying these things. And like I said, if that was all, if all that we needed was the blessing to be on our lives, and after God has decreed it, declared it, and put it in us, if that was it, then everything in your life would automatically change as a result of the blessing. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't need anything else. But obviously, there has to be more to it. Because everybody here that's born again, you have the blessing on you because God says so, but we know that everything in your life has not changed. So what is the missing component? And this is where I believe we stopped last week. Now, the example that I gave to you was this. On each one of these walls in this room, there's an outlet. There is electricity flowing to that outlet because we've paid the bill. It's been paid for. Now, I can sit in this room, if this room was hot, I can sit in this room and complain all day long about how hot it is. It's hot in this room. I don't know why it's so hot in this room. I paid my electrical bill. I paid KCP, and I, I sent them the money, and it's still hot in this room. What's wrong with this place? Why come it won't cool down? It's not KCPNL's fault. The problem is I don't have a mechanism Amen. to plug into that outlet to draw out of there what I've paid for. Amen. The electricity's in it. Now, if I go down to the local store and, and buy me a fan or an air conditioner and I bring it back and I plug it in to the outlet on the wall, then what's in that outlet will come through that mechanism and I'll benefit from Amen. it. Amen. Why? Because I've already paid for it. So what we need to figure out is what is the mechanism that we need that unlocks the power that's in the blessing? Because the blessing has been paid for. Jesus died and he paid that we would live a blessed and empowered life. But it's up to you and I to go and, and, and to engage with the proper mechanism to draw out of the blessing, the empowerment that you need Amen. to get done what you need to have done in your life. Amen. Without it, you can't get it. So this is where we stopped. Looking at this empowerment, how does the blessing of Abraham work? Because we need to know that so that we can see the blessing do what God says is supposed to be done in our lives. Now, let's go over to the book of Galatians. And, and, and let's look at this. Because we're going to have to quit being angry and we're going to have to quit blaming God and we're going to have to quit blaming everything else for why things aren't working in our lives. It's not God's fault. God's word is true, people. Because the moment we stop saying that God's word doesn't work, then we might as well hang heaven up. We're done. Because if it, don't, if it doesn't work in healing, if it doesn't work in finances, if it doesn't work in anything else, then it don't work in salvation either. And if it don't work in salvation, then there's no heaven and there's no hell. So we might as well quit. What are we here for? So we can't say that God's word doesn't work. God's word works. If it's ever worked in your life once, then it'll work forever. So there has to be something that we are, we are missing. Now, Galatians chapter 3. Now, I'm going to slow down here because we got to make this connection. We have to draw the empowerment out. The blessing is there. You are blessed, but you have to draw. There is something that God has given to you that will pull that empowerment out and cause that empowerment to go to work on whatever needs to happen in your life. The blessing needs a mechanism to trigger it. Now, notice here, he gives us an insight into this. Verse 8. Okay, Father. All right. Acts chapter 3. Let's, let's, we, we, we're going to come back there. Go to Acts chapter 3. Now, in Acts chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 25. And, and, and I'm going to read it from the message right before you hear it in a second. But let's look at verse 25. And it says, you are the children of the prophets. 
and, the, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turn every one of you away from your iniquities. Now, the message Bible for that verse of Scripture says, and you are the heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with, with, with your father Abraham. So we've inherited something. And what we've inherited is the right, our, we, we have a covenant right to walk in a blessed life. It's part of our birthright, it's our inheritance. And it says that we've inherited it. And then he went on, he says here, he said unto Abraham, through your offspring, all the people of the earth shall be blessed. Through the offspring, all the people of the earth shall be blessed. Uh, when God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you away from your wicked ways. So now notice, the Bible says that he raised Jesus up and sent him to bless us. And causing us to turn from the life we used to live to a new way of living. So the blessing is on us. Now, in that verse of Scripture here, if you, if, if you read it and study it out, what you'll find is he said he sent Jesus to bless us. Well, what have we been studying here over the last few months when we're looking at the, 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 the Word of God? Well, 1 John tells us who Jesus is. He's who? The Word. So what he has said here, he has sent his word to empower us. The empowerment needs the word, and the word needs the empowerment. The reason that you cannot extract out of the blessing what God has put in it for you is because you're not using the word. You have to have it, folks. You can't have one without the other. That's like you're trying to get water with only uh, uh, oxygen. You can't have water with, with only oxygen. Man. Some hydrogen's got to be in there somewhere. And you put those two elements together, they do what? They create water. You take one of them away, you, have no, you, you can't have water. The same thing is true with this blessed life. God has, Jesus says he did what? I have come that you may what? Have life and have it more abundantly. Why? Because he knows what you've been empowered with. But he also knows that the way to it is through the word. So he says, I've raised up the word and sent the word to bless you and causing your mind to change from how you used to think and live into this new way. Man. Now let's go over, let's take that and take that over to Galatians and, you'll, and, and let's prove it out. It's not that you're not blessed, folks. It's not that God has failed you. It's that we, a lot of God's people really aren't walking by faith. We think we are, but we're not. You don't get to decide on what faith looks like. It's already been prescribed in the Word of God. And you have to follow that. Now notice what it says here, Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 8. And I want to read it from the Amplified Bible. And the scriptures foreseeing. Oh, heck. I just realized I didn't bring my clock out here. You're going to have to help me, Micah. And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify, declare right, put in right standings with himself, the Gentiles, in consequence of their faith. Notice, how did we get put in right standing with God? B because of our faith. Put in right standing with God by consequence of our faith, proclaim the gospel for telling of, a, uh, of glad tidings of a Savior long beforehand to Abraham in the promise, saying, In you shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Notice that. Go back up to verse 6. Notice what verse 6 says. 
And Abraham believed in and adhered to and trusted in and relied on God. Basically what that just said was, and Abraham lived and operated by faith. That's what faith is. Faith is the believing in, the adhering to, the trusting in, and relying on God. See, we say we're living by faith, but are we doing that? No, we're relying on our own strength. We're relying on our own power. We're relying on what we can do and how we can get it done. We really aren't relying on God. What most people do is they start stuff and then ask God to bless it. And that's not how you do it. If you wait on God and do what he said, do when he said, do it, it's already blessed. But let's go ahead here and continue here. And it was reckoned and placed to his account as righteousness, conformity to his divine will and purpose, thought, and action. Notice, living by faith, living by the word, uh, altered the purpose, it altered the thoughts, and it altered the actions. It, it governed how this man lived. Abraham walked by faith, and it controlled how he thought, how he behaved, and how he uh, chose. Verse 7, and understand this. Now, uh, hear what Abraham, how he did. He says, now understand this. It is really the people who live by faith. It is really the people who adhere to, trust in, and rely upon God. It is really those people who are the true sons of Abraham. So the people who live by faith can walk in the same degree of the blessing that Abraham walked in. Now, when we look at Abraham's life, we can see the blessing operating. We're going to get to that a little later. But what I'm trying to get you to see here is the connection that is needed between the prosperous life, the blessing and the prosperous life. So you have the blessing here, the prosperous life here. The connection is the word of God. And we've been missing that. It says right here that if you're going to do it and have it and experience it the way Abraham did it and experienced it, you're going to have to do it the way Abraham did it, which was adhering to, trusting in, and relying on God, walking by faith. Independent of what you see, how you feel about it, or what you think. Doesn't matter. If, if Abraham could do that and get the miracle of a kid, when he was too old to have kids and his wife was barren, if the blessing would produce a child under those circumstances, it would produce a house, it would produce a car, it would produce anything else that you need if you will do it the way God said do it. It will produce. Why? That's what the blessing does. It's designed to make you multiply, increase, be fruitful. That's all the blessing knows how to do. That is the empowerment of the blessing. But notice, it can't do that where there's no faith. Because faith is the connection. Let's just keep, let's, 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 let's keep tracking this. Now go to John chapter 3. You know, I had to learn this. Quantrill and I, we've bumped our heads many a times. I told you a few weeks ago about that car we bought. Oh my God, that car caused us more problems. But we, we weren't walking by faith, we was walking by sight when we did that. We was walking by what we thought, what we knew. The blessing that God gave us, we, we despised. See, God had already gave us a car, but we despised it because it wasn't flashy. It wasn't sporty like everybody else's car. But it was new and it was, it was what we could afford. It was, what we could, it was what we could handle. It was at the level that we were. Not only was it at the level that we could handle, but it was at the level of our faith development. So you got to get that. There, everybody in here is on a different faith developmental level. And what one person may be able to handle through faith, another one, you may not be there yet. But where we were, God, God, the empowerment was working. But we despised it because it didn't look like somebody else's. And we went and got something that looked a little flashy like somebody else's, and, 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 and it messed us all up. And that thing ended up getting repossessed. It ended up getting taken away. We ended up being shamed. We ended up driving a raggedy church van. <laughs> 
the windows wouldn't roll down on it, and it's hot outside. Our kids, we all up in there sweating. Like, it was horrible. <laughs> you burn $20, $20 worth of gas going around the corner in it. That's how bad it was. But you know what? We didn't complain. We got right on up in there. Lord, forgive us. We don't blew this. And you know we blew it. We got right up in there. And, 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 and we found out, we, hey, we made it work until God moved us. I remember we drove that big old raggedy blue van right onto the drive-in, put it up in the back. <laughs> we in it. Might as well go on and enjoy ourselves. Hey, it's, we, we, hey, don't need to be sad. Where, where are we going? Where are we going? Are we giving up on church now? Where are we going? Where am I going? Where am I going? I'm already in trouble, so if I wave the white flag now, where, where am I going to find victory? So we, 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 we just kept believing God and kept trucking and kept trucking and kept trucking. And God did a God. I was standing in the parking lot talking to uh, the pastor of the church. He had just got through telling me. Now here, watch God. He had just got through telling me a few days before. He says, well, uh, well Deacon Brown, you know, because you know, the people in the church were putting pressure on him about us driving this, this raggedy church van. Well, nobody else driving it. It was just sitting there r r rusting away. What, what, no one driving this van ever. And he let us drive because we have any transportation. And it was helping us get back and forth to church and to work and whatever. And so the church members started putting pressure on him about this little raggedy church van. <laughs> so he comes and he says, well, you know, he, he cleaned it up. Well, you know, we have to get, we're going to have to get the church van back now. You know, if we're, I'm really not helping you if I let you drive the church van. That's not really helping you. You know, it's, not, it's, it's really hindering your faith. I'm sitting scratching my head because I'm young and I'm like, okay, how's this? What are you talking about, man? So, okay, I smile. All right, it's your van, you know, if that's what you want. Okay, fine. So he took it back. And so a few days later, we're standing in the parking lot, me and him talking, because ain't no need getting mad at him. It ain't his fault. So we're standing there talking, and another member of the church just so happened to pull up in a little red hatchback, a little four-door red hatchback. And, uh, and we were talking. He got, he started talking with us for a minute. But right before he got ready to leave, he got back in the car. He started walking to the car and he says, hey, do you know anybody want to buy a car? I said, Look at God. Do you know somebody want to buy a car? I said, yeah. <laughs> How much? He says, well, um, the man who I'm selling this car for, he, you know, he said he'd work with whoever wanted to buy it. Because, you know, we don't have a lot of money. And so I said, well, let me talk to it. And I started, that man, so God worked it and arranged it to where all we had to pay was a small, like, thing, like $75 a month or whatever. Whatever it was, it was at our faith level. We could handle it. We could handle it. I guarantee when we got a little bitty car there, I could care less about flashy. <laughs> God has solved all that. All that was gone. <laughs> gone. I'm trusting God now. Hey, yes, thank you, Jesus. We will drive this little car right here. And that car, we drove that car to the day they totaled it out. Somebody hit us and totaled it. But we drove that car. That car didn't cause us no problem. That's the car I told you when I told you I didn't have the money to, to put the blinker in it. And the Lord told me to take a popsicle stick. See, the blessing was working with us through the whole entire process. But our faith had to be developed. And we had to have our faith developed in God and not in what we could do. Because what we could do got us in trouble. Now, notice this here. John chapter 3, verse 34. Now watch this. For he who God has sent speaks the word of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So notice, how did Jesus do what Jesus did? See, you make the mistake sometimes of thinking that he could do it because he was a son of God. He was Jesus and he could do it. No, he couldn't do no more than what you could do. If he wasn't going to do it the way God said faith works. And notice, faith works how? By hearing and hearing and speaking the word of God. It just told you. He, God, who he sent was Jesus, did what? Spoke the word of God and God allowed the spirit to work in his life without measure. Now, that simply being said is this. You can have the blessing without the spirit of God because the spirit of God is the, bless is the administrator of the blessing. He's the one that brought it in there. So if Jesus would speak the word of God, the scripture just said he was able to operate in the empowerment of the blessing without measure. The very next verse tells you that. It says, because God and God gave all things into his hand. 
What do you need being to be given into your hand? What are you saying? Are you saying what you need to say or are you saying the word? <coughs> are you saying what you have learned or are you saying the word? See, what I'm trying to get you to see here is, yes, you are blessed, but you, are, you have yet to plug in by faith. Oh, well, Pastor, we make the right confession. See, no, nah, no, nah, well, hold on, wait just one second. I didn't say making confessions. See, you can confess all day long one thing and live differently. People do it every day. We're not talking about your confessions. I'm talking about how do you live. And we find out how you live outside of church. Man. How do you live when the pressure's on? How do you live when you're out there and nobody's looking? How are you living when behind the scene when, when ain't nobody there but you, but you and God and the devil? How are you living? Are you speaking the word? Are you living the word? Are you thinking the word? Are you operating the word? We read that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 last week, uh, uh, the week for last, rather. Is, is that govern how you think? Remember, it said Abraham believed God, adhered to, trusted in, and it altered his purpose, thoughts, and actions. <clears throat> See, if you're not going to believe the word and live by the word, then it won't change any thoughts. It won't govern any uh, act, act, of, uh, of your actions. This is what we're talking about, the word living in you to the point to it controls how you do things, how you see things. So it says, he spoke the word of God, and God gave him of his spirit without measure. And the father loves the son and has given all things into the son's hands. And he that believeth on the son has everlasting life. He that will believe the word has Zoe life. That's the life Jesus said he came for us to have. All right, y'all looking at me strange, but let's keep tracking because I'm not through yet. Amen. So now, the scripture says in Galatians 3 and 13 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. You are redeemed from the curse. So that simply means that the curse has no authority to be in your life. No need for it to be there. It has no right to be there. So if the curse is there, then that means the, there's another scripture that says the curse causes shall not come. Now that you are born again and redeemed from the curse, if the curse is showing up, that means you've given cause. Somehow or another, you've opened the door for it to get back in there again because it has no right to be there. But if that's the case, if you open the door for it to get in, you can shut the door and shut it back out. But you need to, first of all, understand how it got in in the first place. And I'm telling you, it got in because you weren't doing it by faith. You were doing it based on worldly wisdom, worldly methods, and worldly operations. And, 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 and let's just be honest, folks. When you do things the, world, the way the world does it, you get the world's results. Yeah, you get them. There's just no way around that. That's why the Bible says, don't be so quick to copy their behavioral patterns. This is why you study the Word of God, and this is why you eat on the Word of God, to grow your faith, because the more faith that is grown in you, the more detached you come, become from the world. I mean, it's a process. But all the while you're going through the process, God is working with you. The blessing is working on your behalf if you'll do it God's way. So, it is really the people that live by faith. They're the true descendants of Abraham. See, it's not just a Jewish race of people. No, it's, it, it, the, the, the scripture makes it very clear. Hey, it, we're not talking, but we're, in this particular instance right here, we're not talking about Hebrews, Jews. We're talking about believers. People that will believe the word of God. He says, if you believe it like Abraham believed it, then I am going to do for you what I did for Abraham. I read the scripture said it's your birthright. You're born unto this. You have a right to it. Now go with me to Hebrews chapter 6. And let's, 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 let's take a look at this. This connection. 
There's a faith connection that has to be made. Just like I could stand in this room and complain all day long about being hot until I went and bought a fan, I can't benefit from what I paid for. Until faith is applied the way God says it's supposed to be applied, you can't benefit from what Jesus has paid for for you. The, but the blessing is always there. Waiting for a faith demand. Now, notice what it says in Hebrews chapter 6. Let's start with verse 13. And I'm going to also, for the sake of time, read this from the Amplified Bible. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself, since he had no one greater to swear by. Saying, blessing, I will certainly bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. So, when, so, so that applies to you. We, that's part of your birthright. God says, hey, hey, just same thing he said to Abraham. In blessing, I will certainly bless you, and in multiplying, I will certainly multiply you. Verse 15, and so it was that Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently. Herein is where God's people get into trouble. We do not know how to endure patiently. We think we have to have it now. And that is the trick that the world is under because the world wants everything now. And so what happens in the world is you, you, you want it, you want it now. So what happens is you begin to manipulate things to get it. But we're not supposed to do that. Hey, it says that if we're going to be the children of Abraham, then we got to do it the way Abraham did it. And the Bible says Abraham endured patiently, waited long and endured patiently. But he realized in obtaining in the birth of Isaac uh, the pledge that was, that was to come, what God had promised him. I don't, let me say something to you here. I don't care how long it take for me to acquire what God says belongs to me if after I get it, I don't owe anybody for it. Think about it. You can spend your time believing God for the thing and then get it, or you can spend your time working to pay off a debt and then get it, and, and, and to get it. But either way it go, it's going to cost you some time. I would much rather go ahead on and wait and believe God and get it debt free than to me have to make sure now I got to be slaving all the rest of my days for all this time to pay, get it paid for. Time is in there either way it go, folks. You get to determine which one, of, which one of the processes you're going to operate under. Now, you got a choice. Now, the world decides we'll do it the debt way and go on and get the thing. But you're going to pay for it over, over time. God says, well, why don't you just wait on me? Follow me. Same time is going to be in there, but when it's done, it's done. Now, which one is better? I can tell you through experience, <coughs> Pay for waiting on God is better because it can't be taken away from you then. Now, notice this here. Verse 15 again, and so it was with Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently, realized obtaining the birth of Isaac, the pledge of what was to come, what God had promised him. Men indeed swear by one greater than themselves. And with that, all disputes are, and the oaths are, are, are taken for a confirmation is final. According as God, in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond all doubt to those who were to inherit the promise, the unchangeableness of, of, of his purpose and plans intermedi intervened and mediated with, with, with an oath. God swore. God has sworn to do this for you. See, this is what I'm saying. What do, what do we believe when it comes to, do we believe God? Do we believe him? Do you believe him? He says, he has, he, hey, he says, now, in, 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 in the earth, 
men will swear by one greater than themselves. And since God had no one greater to swear by, he swore by himself. In other words, what he said there is this. If I don't perform the oath that I've made, that I have to cease from being God. That's what he just said there. And so it goes on and says, so by two unchangeable things, by his word and the blood, the oath, he's given you his word and his sword in blood that he will never deceive, deceive or prove false unto us. And then it goes on and says here that the word is so strong, it says that, that whosoever steps out up on it, it cannot slip. It cannot break down. The word of God is a sure foundation for those that stand on it. It will do what God said it will do. You got to believe that. I believe it. I've come down the road in this thing long enough to where I've drawn my line to saying, God said it'll work, don't gonna it'll work. Now, how long is it going to take? I don't care how long it takes. That's not my question. I don't care about how long it takes. All I want to know is, does it work? Yes. So that settles it for me. Amen. It works. And I know it works. Victory after victory after victory. It is amazing to me how when one thing doesn't work in your life, Satan has a way of, of, of mass erasing all of the other things that God has done for you. You can't remember none of that. But the reason that God has given you small victories is for you to have a track record with him to point to and say, if God did that for me and God did this for me, then he'll do this as well. See, anytime I find the devil trying to rob me of my stance, I go back in down memory lane. Nah, the devil, you don't lie, because I remember when God did that, and I didn't see no way out. And I remember when God brought us out of this, and I couldn't figure out how to get out of that either. But one thing I know is he did it. Now, I may not be able to explain to you how it all happened, but I know it happened because I refused to let go of the word. I refused to give up. And if I die leaving this earth, I'm going to die leaving saying God's word work. I don't care if I die, if I die away on the promise, I'm going to leave here saying my last breath, glory to God, it works. It works because I know it works. So, the connection between the prosperous life and the blessing is your faith. And to whatever degree you've developed your faith, that is the degree that the power of the blessing can work. Now, God sometimes gets in there through grace and mercy and does things above and beyond your faith, but that's not the norm. Those are just, those are called miracles where God intervenes. But you and I can't live on miracles. We're not designed to live on miracles. You're designed to live by faith. That means walking and trusting God day by day by day. So we see that, 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 that the connection is, is your faith. This is why we work and labor in the word of God to get our minds renewed and the word of God built up in us so that when we step out on stuff, we have a sure foundation under us. The other thing here that God had to teach us, and I was listening to, I don't know who, I, I think, maybe it was Jerry Savelle I was listening to. I don't know who it was. But anyway, he made a statement, he says, when God tells you something, he says, you don't have to get in a rush about it. I didn't learn this. He says, you go and you go into prayer about that thing. And God is not, see, God is not fickle. And he said, you go in there, you get, get a confirmation. It, it was Keith Moore. He says, you go get confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. I mean, you see, you stay in that thing and you just be patient. Stay in prayer for a while and let that thing grow in you. Because God will begin to grow it in you. If it came from God, he's going to back it. And God's not going to get, get upset because you asked him three times to confirm it. Well, Lord, okay, now, now I, 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 I'm, I'm going to do what you said do. And you know I am. But I'm going to sit right here until you settle me in this thing. Because I need a sure foundation so when I step out here on this thing, because once I make the step, I'm not changing. 
it can't be changed. So I'm going to know that when once I'm going back here, I'm going to patiently build that thing so that when I do step out on it, I have a platform that's sure. But what most people do is they hear God and start jumping and running. And here's the problem, and we've all done it. You start out on God because he said do it, but because you didn't let it grow and build in you, you get out there, then you start doing things on your own now. Now you're going to help God. He don't need your help. He just needs your obedience. It's far better for you to be able to hear and wait and hear and wait than you to help. God don't need any help. He just needs for you to hear and wait. And sometimes we get impatient because it's just taking too long. Well, wait, wait, hold on. Just wait one second. Who said so? Who said so? Well, I should be further along than this. Okay, well, you're not. So is that the, you're gonna, is that the pressure to, to make bad decisions? Because when you start listening to anything other than God, then you're underneath the wrong influence, and that pressure is there to make you make a bad choice. What did Joshua 1 and 8 say? Meditate the word till you can do what? Observe to do. Meditate the word long enough until you can see how to do it properly. Because it says once you see it, then you're able to deal wisely with the affairs of life. But if you get under pressure and you start doing things and you really don't see your, how you're going to get through this thing, then you, are, you, you have the, the, the possibility of, of, of running into error. And God, there's no error in what God says do. There's none. There's absolutely none. Well, Pastor, well, 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 how you know all this? Well, let's, let's go to something recently. Remember when I came back from Texas a couple of several years ago, and I told you God said buy a church van. And now right away, I didn't say anything to any of y'all about that because I wasn't quite sure. Am I just hearing something somebody else did or is this just something, a pipe dream or what's going on here? But I know I, I heard something. So now what was the first step? All right, Father, I'm going to take that by a church van. I'm going to hang that right out here. Now, if this is what you're telling me to do, you're going to deal with me on that. Because I didn't come in here right away and tell you guys that. I took a whole lot of time. And then I came here when I finally came, because here's why. Because once I say it, it's out there. So I got to make sure I'm saying it right. And so I came here and I told you exactly what God said to do. God told me to tell you guys that, 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 that he would, we would buy a church van. And, and, and anyone that would believe, he would put $1,500 in their hands outside of you having to work for it. Isn't that what I said? Came here and I stood here and I said it. A couple of weeks went past, I got a little nervous. So, oh my Jesus, ooh, what, I don't say it to these people. How God going to do that? See, now what am I, my mind's now starting to play tricks on me because now I'm getting into what I can see. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, there ain't enough people in here, Father, for Okay, 1,500 times. I mean, that started working in my mind. And then I got to thinking, oh, my Jesus, how are you going to get $1,500 into everybody? So then I came here and I said, well, you know, what we'll do is, you know, we'll piece it together, you know, just as you turn it in, I'll keep up with whoever. And then I went back home and God said, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> so I came back the next Sunday after that what did I sit up here and do God didn't tell me to tell y'all to piece nothing together he said see I gotta stay because if I go to piece it together I'm off God's plan now I'm trying to do it my way now nah God didn't tell us to piece nothing together he said he would put it in your hands independent of you having to work for it I came back in here and said didn't I come in here and say it to you now God is going to make you a partaker of your own fruit. So I, God is going to make you a partaker of your own fruit. So now I stood here and I said that to you guys. Now, I'm thinking in my mind for you $1,500 per family. But God said he would put $1,500 in, in each person's hand if that's what you wanted. Oh my, I ain't gotten anywhere. 
Tell me when I get the three beeps and then I'll stop. <laughs> All right. So that meant to me, in my mind, I needed $1,500 for me, $1,500 for Quant Quantrell. I didn't know where it was coming from. I guarantee you, a couple of weeks after that, $5,000 check showed up in my house. I had no idea where it came. Where, where is this money coming from? Now, here's a check. And here come the devil. You know, you can pay this with that. You can do this with that. Ooh, a whole lot of stuff started rolling through my mind. And my mind got to thinking. But then I said, well, wait, hold on just one second. No. 3000 this money right here is for me to come in here. And I was the first person to come in here and say, here it is, two weeks into this thing, Three weeks into this thing, here's $3,000 God put in our hands independent of us having to work for it. Boom, there it is. Then God started doing it for di different people, people that would stick their faith out there on it. Then we went that uh, long span, and the money started coming in. All of a sudden, we got it to like, what, about $12,000? Just, just boom, $12,000 all of a sudden. Now, didn't, didn't the number of people in here didn't change. It's just God was working because we, we're on his track now. We're doing it the way he said do it. So we got to around about... $15,000 and it just stopped. And like six or seven months went past. And you know, and I kind of had forgot about it and I started thinking about it and I forget about it and I think about it when I forget, you know, I'm confessing, you know. And, 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 and then I started getting a little nervous. I was like, oh Jesus, what's, what's, what's going on? I mean, we're almost into a year into this thing now. I'm like, what's going on? And that, the devil started putting pressure on me. And I almost fell into the pressure because I said, I'm getting everybody's money back out the bank, and I'm giving all the people their money back because they're not going to say Pastor Brown's trying to steal their money because it was taking so long. I'm going to give everybody their money back. But then I said, well, that ain't what God said. So I just said, I'll keep my mouth shut. Because if I can't say anything in faith, I'm not going to say anything at all. So I just shut up. Some more time went past, then God said, tell Quantrell to check in or check on the money. So it had jumped about 17,000. Quantrell Chase, he said about 17,500. Then God started quickening me now, start confessing. So I started having us stand up, point at our van, talk to our van. We, we're following God, though. Notice we're tracking with God. All of a sudden, I have no idea what happened, where it came from, but boom. All the money we need just showed up and it was extra because we were confessing for 20000 which was good when we started believing. But when it came time to buy the vans, the price had gone up. God knew that. So we needed 24. God had gave us 24. So where'd all that money come from? It was the easiest thing to do. I didn't have to sweat for it. I didn't have to toil for it. I didn't have to beg nobody for it. We didn't have to beat ourselves up. We didn't sell no chicken dinners and nothing. All we did was just take what God said do and wait on God. Yeah, and then God's God just kept going, just kept going. And, and, and what he said to me to tell you when we first did it is that he said he was teaching us something. I got it. God will do what God said do if we believe what he said and stick with it. And I was transparent because I wanted you guys to see it wasn't because my faith was so greater than yours. I made mistakes along the way, but, but repentance would get me back on track. See, just because I made a mistake didn't mean I had messed the thing up. No, you mess the thing up is when you make a mistake and keep on making them. But I got myself back over here in, in faith, kept the church focused on, 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 on it in faith, $24,000 showed up. We went, we sat down at the, at the Ford dealership. It was a wonderful thing. The man said, well, how are we going to pay for this? We write one check paid for. That was, that's, can you imagine on the inside of me? Now, I don't know what it did for you, but on the inside of me, what it did for me is it proved to me. Cause see, you, and then God, a few weeks later, said, "You know, now, son, you know, me helping you do this van is the equivalent, uh, the equivalent of Kenneth and, and Creflo and them bleeding for planes. The same way they get planes is how you got this van." I didn't even think that. Yes. Well, God was telling me, it ain't just the, it ain't just the Kenneth Copelands that can do this. Yeah. Amen. It ain't just the Creflo Dawes and Bill Winstons that can do it. Amen. Any of my people can do this if they listen to me. And follow me. And so we have a van. God did it. 
And we didn't have to take away from anything. We, it didn't come out of none of the other church functions, none of the other church budget, nothing. God did it. Now, why did he do it? Because he told us when we went into this, he was teaching us something. And what he was trying to teach us is, is that faith works. Yeah. And if you'll stick with it and let God do it the way he says it's supposed to be done, he will bring it to pass. Amen. He will bring it to pass. Now, oh, Jesus. Real quick. Can I do a real quick, Micah? All right. I can get it in 10 minutes. Isaiah 55. I'm going to end with this. What you and I, what, what, what most people think is that you got to have money to do things that God said do. No, you don't. What you got to have is faith. Amen. See, I heard somebody say that faith will either get you the thing or to get you the thing that will get the thing. But what you need is faith because to the world, and the, if you're gonna, but now if you're going to operate in the world system, then money is the currency. You got to have it. That's all it understands. But we're not of the world. Now notice what it says here in Isaiah 55, verse 1. Everyone that's thirsty, come to the water. And he that has no money, come by and eat. Yea, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. <laughs> now, how in the world am I going to come and buy something and I don't have any money? Verse 2, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And why do you labor for that which, is not satis which, which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight in its fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercy of David. Come and buy without money. In the kingdom of God, faith is the currency, not money. You can get anything you want to get if your faith is big enough. Grow your faith. All you got to do is keep growing your faith and your faith can purchase anything. And if money is necessary, faith to get it. But faith can get it without money. The same way God gave us 24000 if I bought a van, he could have just had us somebody walk and say, the Lord said, give this van to you. See, money is not the issue. The issue is your faith. The issue is your faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2, we know what that says. Now faith is. It didn't say now money is. It said now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified Bible says your faith is your confirmation of what hasn't been revealed to your senses yet. I can believe God. I don't need one dime to believe God. I can believe God and lay hold on whatever God says belong to me. Why? Because I have a blessing on my life. And if I allow my faith to engage that blessing, I'll extract the power out to get whatever it is that I need. And you can too. It's, it's your faith, folks. The blessing needs your faith. The blessing of Abraham needs your faith. Now, last place, Mark 18, Matthew's 18. We're going to stop here because Micah said I got to quit. <laughs> Verse 18, 19. And again, I say unto you, so obviously he has said this before, that if Two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, as touching anything they shall ask. Anything that a person, that two believers can come and agree upon in faith. Anything, anything they ask. Anything. If we could just get together and stand and believe on this thing and agree according to the word of God. Anything. Thing they ask, it shall be done of my father. Anything, anything. 
So that tells me all I need to get things done in my life is the word of God and somebody to agree with me. And I can get it done. Because where two or three are gathered together in my, in, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Why? To bring to pass the thing that they have agreed upon in faith. <coughs> Folks, why, why is it not working? I'm blessed. Well, why is it not working? Because where's your faith? <coughs> now, if you married... You already got one ahead of the game because in your house, who else is it there better to agree with than my wife? If you're not married, then ask the Lord to give you an agreement partner because just anybody can't agree with you on stuff. You got to have the right person because some people are jealous. Like, God, I won't do that for me. Well, I don't agree for him to do it with you, but I don't need your help. You get on over there. Let me find somebody that, that, that understand what we're doing here. Folks, hey, you are blessed. Amen. God says you're blessed. What you need is to grow your faith so that your faith can support whatever God tells you to do. And if God tells you to do it, then, he's going to, then your faith is going to grow to be able to support it. Because the moment God tells you to do something, it, hey, it's not a question about if anymore. It's just, now, Lord, give me the plan. To buy the van, he gave us the plan. We followed the plan. We didn't deviate from the plan. Every time I tried, I came back to the plan. And the plan, faith in the plan, engaged the power of the blessing, which pulled out of the unseen into the seen a van. Now, we're believing for other stuff now. And I go back and tell the devil, when the devil said it ain't going to work, devil, you lying because it already don't work. Now, you may have been able to tell me that 10 years ago, and I may have believed you, but nope, I've already got proof. There it is sitting in the driveway right now. So I can just go to the window and look out. Liar, because there it is, it's already worked. You should have stuff in your life that you can be able to point to. And if you have nothing, you have a van too. So every time you see the van sitting out there, you should go out there and say, devil, you lied. My car is coming. You see that right there? My house is coming. You see that right there? My healing is coming. You see that right there? You ought to be able to go out there and point to it and tell him, you lied. You're lying because if God did this, then he can do anything else if I'll let my faith stay engaged. Amen. All right, Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Very simple, very plain. Ho hopefully, Father, the word of God has impacted our hearts and our minds to cause us to change how we do things so that we could be like Abraham. Allow our faith to cause us to trust in, rely upon, depend upon God so that it can change us in our purpose, thoughts, and actions. And we give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hopefully the message you just listened to was a blessing to you. I know it's a blessing to me. And the word of God is absolutely true. God's desire for everyone is to prosper and to be in health. Now you may be saying, well, how do I get in on that? It's simple. It's, for, it's, it's been made available to everyone who's a part of God's family. Now you may be saying, I'm not a part of God's family. Well, that's simple. It's just a simple prayer. And let me lead you through it. Repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Take my life. Make something of it. Make me what I ought to be. I receive you now as my Lord and as my Savior. Now, if you've just prayed that prayer, it's that simple. You are a member of God's family. Now, the next step would be find a good word teaching church and get in it and get as much of the word in you as possible. Now, if you're here in the Kansas City area, we would like to invite you out here to Works of Faith Ministries. We're located at 12605 6th Street, Grandview, Missouri. We'd be more than welcome to have you. We would actually, would, it would be a privilege of ours to have you. Come on out. Let us sow the Word of God into you. Now, remember, the Word of God makes it very clear that you are blessed and highly favored. Amen.